I'm Anastasia from the Ames Public Library, and I am here to start off a video about this week's reading challenge. And it's really more than just a reading challenge, as you'll see as we go along. Um, but this week we were challenging you to read a book that you had been meaning to read for a long time, watch a movie that takes place in another place or country, and also to uh, keep a journal, do some journaling about your experiences. So I'll start by telling you about this book, The Dragonfly Fool by Eva Ibbotson. And it is a book that my coworker Danielle recommended to me. That was back when I was in youth services. I've since moved to resource services where I do cataloging. But as I was saying, The Dragonfly Pool, she handed it to me and said, Anastasia, I think you'll love this book. And didn't say anything else because she's a true friend. I really don't like to know what it's gonna happen in a book before I read it. So I put it on my I'd love to read it someday list and hauled it out this week. And um, she was right, I did love it. Just in case you like to know a little bit about a book before you read it, I'll tell you. It's about a girl named Tally who lives during the time of World War II. She lives in London and she's sent to a boarding school in the country to be safer there. She loves it. It's a great school, lots of outdoors, lots of nature study. And she and her friends end up going to a country called Bergania, which of course is um, not a country that we know of but it just adds a little fantastical element. But also just, I appreciated reading a story where the countries were in a time of crisis just like we are now. So that might be something to think about as you choose your book to find a time of crisis. I also wanted to highlight this book, A Voice in the Wind by Francine Rivers, because all of Francine Rivers' books are on Hoopla, and Hoopla books are always available as long as you have enough credits left. And Francine Rivers is an excellent inspirational writer. She writes, um, historical and uh, Christian romance contemporary novels. Um, this one takes place in AD 70. It's very dramatic about the destruction of Jerusalem and a Roman family that takes a Jewish slave into their um, home and their interactions. You can see there ends up being some smoldering passion and how does that all work out? So if you like lots of drama, I would recommend Francine Rivers. Um, also lots of drama in Bryn Hur. This is what I've been watching this week. Um, uh, movie that takes place actually in the time of Jesus, so kind of a similar time period. Um, and he is consumed by his desire for revenge, as you can see here on the um, tape case. I'm hoping that he may get to some forgiveness at the end, but um, there's, uh, yes, takes place in Israel and in Rome. And I dug this out of my parents' basement, so if you, you know, can't come to the library and you're looking for some good things to read and watch, take a look in your basement or your parents' basement. I'll just um, also let you know what I've been doing for journaling this week. Um, I decided to take uh, a few minutes to do a gratitude journal and just try to find the little things in the day to be grateful for. Um, it's difficult when the, the big things are all difficult, but there are still some little things that you can enjoy. So I've been enjoying the robins and the flowers coming up and the sunshine and just time with my family. So I hope that you're able to find some things to be grateful for as well. I'm Amanda, I work in youth services, and I just want to say hi to all my friends that I haven't seen for a while. I hope you're staying busy and entertaining yourselves and reading, and I miss you, and I hope to see you very soon. The book that I've been reading this week is one that I've been meaning to read for 20 years now. It is Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States. Now, in this book, um, you probably didn't get much of this information in your high school history classes or even in college level history classes. I know I didn't, just the bit that I've read thus far. But this book is probably one of the few volumes to tell America's story from the point of view of, and in the words of, America's women, factory workers, African Americans, Native Americans, the working poor, and immigrant laborers. And I think it's good to know where you've come from in a more complete perspective so that maybe we know where we want to go. In the first year of the white man in Virginia in 1607, Powhatan had addressed a plea to John Smith that turned out prophetic. How authentic it is may be in doubt but it is so much like many Indian statements that it may taken, be taken as, if not the rough letter of that first plea, the exact spirit of it. 
I have seen two generations of my people die. I know the difference between peace and war better than any man in my country. I am now grown old and must die soon. My authority must descend to my brothers, Opichitan, Opikano, and Katako, then to my two sisters, and then to my two daughters. I wish them to know as much as I do, and that your love to them may be like mine to you. Why will you take by force what you may have quietly by love? Why will you destroy us who supply you with food? What can you get by war? We can hide our provisions and run into the woods. Then you will starve for wronging your friends. Why are you jealous of us? We are unarmed and willing to give you what you ask if you come in a friendly manner and not so simple as not to know that it is much better to eat good meat, sleep comfortably, live quietly with my wives and children, laugh and be merry with the English, and trade for their copper and hatchets, than to run away from them and to lie cold in the woods, feed on acorns, roots, and such trash, and be so hunted that I can neither eat nor sleep. In these wars, my men must sit up watching, and if a twig break, they all cry out, here comes Captain Smith. So I must end my miserable life. Take away your guns and swords, the cause of all our jealousy, or you may all die in the same manner. So, a really good book to read gives a different perspective on the founding of this country and the history that we've come through. So it's available on Hoopla and on audiobook here in the library as well as a hard copy. Stay healthy, stay safe. And hello, I'm Ellen. Uh, I work in adult services here at the library. And uh, when I spoke to Amanda yesterday in the parking lot, I said, hey, what are you reading? What are you talking about tomorrow? And she mentioned Zinn and flashed the people's history of the United States. And I laughed and I pulled this out of my car and said, I'm, I'm gonna talk about These Truths by Jill Lepore, another American history um, book that's exhaustive and well-researched and very ambitious. Um, so it's my hope to get through this book um, something I've been hoping to read for the past year or two. It's been out since 2018. Um, Jill Lepore, uh, again, American history professor at Harvard. She's also a staff writer at The New Yorker. She's written such books as Secret History of Wonder Woman and other, other such things. Um, I'll read just a sentence that gives you a sense of what her book is about and the, the angles she takes. Um, she says, history isn't only a subject, it's also a method. My method is generally to let the dead speak for themselves. I've pressed their words between these pages like flowers for their beauty or like insects for their hideousness. And I like that line. Um, it means she's not, again, going to just talk about history in a way that's sugarcoated. She's going to present both the good and the bad. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to read this book. Um, I know it will also help me to do some thinking about um, what we're facing right now as a country, um, how we make decisions politically, um, and how we might choose to do that differently in the future. So, it, so it's a book I'm, I'm just diving into. Um, and just to mention another, uh, a more lighthearted light challenge is a book that I have been wanting to read for another year or two. It's called Bird Note. It's a wonderful little book. Each page is a beautiful, beautifully illustrated image of a bird or birds and a small description. Uh, in this case, small birds mob big ones. It's, it's, it talks about that, that um, um, phenomenon that we sometimes see where a bunch of birds gang up on a, a larger bird. Um, there's a number of other um, beautiful paintings, um, images of chickadees and loons and, and that sort of thing. So a, a book that I recommend. Um, in both cases, these books are available electronically. Um, I know that These Truths is available on Hoopla and through Bridges. Um, Bird Note, I'm not sure, but we'll check. Um, the last thing I'll mention is the challenge of journaling. Um, I have sometimes journaled um, in a way that's kind of unique. Um, I'll be reading and I'll use a journal, this one, 
to note words that I don't know. Um, kind of an old-fashioned way of, of looking words up in the dictionary, um, the old-fashioned way, actually putting together um, a list and then going to a physical dictionary and looking them up. So it's a fun, it's a fun way to accompany your reading um, by keeping a journal, jotting down words as you go, and then going ahead and looking them up. So we, we challenge you to go out and think about a book that you might have on your shelf that you'd like to read, um, maybe a journaling project that you'd like to begin, um, maybe a movie, again, set in another place that you'd like to watch. So we challenge you to share with us some of those um, books and movies and journaling projects that you're interested in, interested in. Well, we miss you all, and we hope everyone stays safe, and we'll see you again soon.